Hi, sweetie pie. I have more things to read to you today. And some of them may be goofy and some of them beautiful. But let's start out with this one I was reading when I went to bed last night. It's called Chickadee's Song. And you are the man of the chickadees. You know chickadees and you see chickadees. And there is a chickadee. And you, you know that their song is Chickadee dee 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 dee. Chickadee dee 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 dee. Chickadee. It's a bird. It's a little bird. It's often at the feeders. Uh, none of ours have a red breast like this one does, but you know they're being they're making a painting. Ah, oh, look at that one. It's wings spread. And look at the cardinal up here saying how come you have a feeder that the chickadee fits in, but I don't? I'm going to get a new feeder so that the one on the on the balcony can fit the big birds too. Bigger birds. But anyway, let me read you this poem. But first, this book is called Winter Bees and Other Poems of the Cold. And so they're talking about these different critters in the cold. And then they have the poem, but then they also have a little bit of information. And this is really interesting. How does the tiny chickadee, weighing less than a handful of paper clips, stay alive in the bitter northern winter? Because as you know, it gets very cold here. By spending every waking moment searching for food, which you've witnessed. From just before dawn until the last light of dusk, Chickadees hunt for seeds, berries, and hidden insects to build up a thin layer of fat, which must last them all night. Their dense feathers, which are not very aerodynamic, but perfect for short distance swoops, help keep them warm. Chickadees find tiny roost holes in trees or dense shrubs to conserve heat at night. They can even lower their body temperature to burn less fat. Sometimes a chickadee will hide a seed in a nighttime roost hole for a much-needed snack upon waking. In late winter, chickadees sense the lengthening days and begin singing their Phoebe song announcing a new nesting season. Now, of course, the Phoebe also sings Phoebe, but it's a little bit different. And it's a um, their call song, chickadee-dee-dee-dee-dee, is one of them, but the mating song is the one that could sound like it's saying Phoebe. And when we hear it, I'll let you know. Um, but aren't you glad we put out all those seeds for these little birds that need it so much when it gets cold? Okay, so again, here's the picture. That was that informational bit. And now this beautiful poem. From dawn to dusk in darkling air, we glean and gulp and pluck and snare then find a roost that's snug and tight to brave the long and frozen night. We fluff and preen each downy feather, sing Phoebe and laugh at the weather. For if we're quick and bold and clever, winter's chill won't last forever. The sun wheels high, the cardinal trills, we sip the drips of icicles, the buds are thick, the snow is slack. Spring has broken winter's back. Quick and bold and brave and clever, we preen and fluff each downy feather. Sing Phoebe, laugh at the weather, for winter doesn't last forever. And today is a perfect example of that. It was so cold yesterday, and today it's almost spring-like. There's another one I want to read you here. Let's see if this, this is. Okay. You're going to think I'm making this up, but I am not. There is a plant that's big. It's wild. It grows in the wild, not in the gardens. And it often grows near uh, streams. I have seen it at Needwood, so we'll go look at, find some. And do you know how it protects itself? You're not going to believe this. By stinking. 
It stinks. It smells bad. It does. It really does. You know what his name is? I'll give you a hint. It's two words, and the second word is cabbage. It's not the kind we grow in the vegetable garden, but it's still a kind of cabbage. The first word is skunk. Skunk is an animal that, when it's being attacked, sprays a really smelly smell. Skunk cabbage. And this is what it looks like. Kind of pretty, isn't it? I've seen it also quite green, but this, maybe the blossom, the, the you know, the bud part is reddish. And in a moment, I will read you about skunk cabbage. Look here, it's coming up through the snow. And see the stream nearby? I don't think it grows in the woods. I think it has to be near water. But first I'll read about it, and then I'll read the poem about it. In late winter, a curiously odd flower appears in wet woodlands. Wet woodland. So the woods, but where there's where it's wet, where there's some kind of source of water. The first size bud, no, sorry, fist, the fist size bud of the skunk cabbage burns up through the surrounding snow using heat from special chemicals within its leaves. The purple hood pops open and lets out a powerful stink, much like rotting meat or skunk scent. This potent smell attracts any flying insects that might be active. They swarm to the fleshy cluster of leaves, leaves, I'm sorry, fleshy cluster of flowers within looking for food and warmth and pollinating it in the process. Thus, the lowly skunk cabbage attracts spring's first pollinators and gets a jump on other sweeter smelling and more beautiful flowers in the race to reproduce. Again, there's a picture of it. And if you're taking a walk with your mom or your dad in a spot where there's like a stream or something, um, you, you kind of can't miss it because it's uh, there aren't a lot of things coming up now. And this is big. It's pretty big. And it'll often be down in the area where the stream is, like right along the side or even right where the stream was. Um, and it's distinctive and i think you can uh, it's been such a long time since i've seen it not because it's not common but i haven't taken as many walks um uh, in the in the area where i know it grows this time of year but i'm going to so the name of this poem is called a word i've never heard before triolette for skunk cabbage what i'm guessing is that maybe it's like there's couplet, which is um, two lines in a poem. Maybe this is, like, we'll look it up. Well, why don't I look it up now? Oh, that's a very smart idea. You think of the best things. I forgot we have a built-in dictionary here. Okay, now I go to the dictionary and I type in the word triolet, which might be pronounced that way. In French, it would be triolet. It can be pronounced Triolet or triolet. A poem of eight lines, typically of eight syllables each, rhyming A B A A B A B, and so structured that the first line recurs as the fourth and seventh, and the second as the eighth. Uh, sounds complicated, huh? I mean, not too bad, because it's A B A A A. B A B. So the first line recurs as the fourth and seventh, and the second line recurs as the eighth. So now let's see if that works. That's cool. I never knew that word. Okay, here we go. Triolet for skunk cabbage. Skunk cabbage peeks up through the snow, the first flower in the wood wreathed in an eerie purple glow, up through the slick of soggy snow. Smelling of rotten buffalo, it rears its speckled hood. Skunk cabbage peeks up through the snow, 
the first flower in the wood. So it didn't exactly follow the pattern. Oh, yes, it did. Wait, because the first one is the same as the seventh, and the second one is the same as the eighth. I thought there was one other condition. I will look that up again later, but let me read it again. Skunk cabbage peeks up through the snow, the first flower in the wood, wreathed in an eerie purple glow, up through the slick of soggy snow, smelling a rotten buffalo. It rears its speckled hood. Skunk cabbage peeks up through the snow, the first flower in the wood. That's very cool. Let me read you another one. The whole world is melting. There's pictures of these insects, which, <laughs> wait, sorry, the insects are on this page. I, I, I showed you the wrong one. This one here is a bird, and those are bird's feet. That's not an insect. That's a bird, and those are its feet, and it's under a tree, and those look like melting icicles. And these look like insects in the ground. And you know almost better than most little guys about the number of insects in the ground right now because you have seen chickens kicking up the ground and finding them. And chickens are big birds, and this little bird is doing the same thing. Now, we, oh, before we read the poem, let's read about the, um, the science of it. On warm winter days when the sun is strong, tiny creatures called springtails, or, wait for it, snow fleas, swarm up through layers of snow to congregate on bare patches of ground or the snow itself. About the size of the S on this page, which means tiny, these sturdy wingless creatures are neither true fleas, yay, they don't bite, nor true insects, their bodies have fewer segments. They belong to a cast of arthropods called columbola and are very abundant in, most, in moist places. Up to 6,000 springtails in a square foot of soil feeding on leaf mold and fungi. There are many types of springtails, but those that emerge in winter have special antifreeze in their bodies that allow them to frolic in the snow, look for new places to eat and reproduce. Although they can't fly, they have an explosive way of moving. They fold a tail-like spike called a furcula toward their abdomen and lock it with a tiny hook. When they want to move, their abdominal muscles release the hook, which drives the spike downward and flips them up in the air. Unfortunately, they can't control where they land, but a flip or two is usually enough to get them out of danger or into new munching grounds. So imagine all this time I've been working in the dirt or in early spring or late spring or summer or fall or winter, and I never knew of this creature called a springtail or a snow flea. I wonder how, oh, they said they're as the size of the S on the page, so they're quite tiny. Okay, we learned about springtails, and now I'm going to read the poem called The Whole World is Melting. The whole world is melting. The snow is slumping and dripping and staining the bark black. I've seen that. Roots poke from puddles and the leaf litter where we live is squishy damp instead of frozen hard, and we have to move. We have to spring, a mob of us, a mass of us, a throng of us, launching ourselves to the top of the slippery snow, swarming its peaks and valleys, and what will we find? New moss, all ripe for slithering, new loam, new love, the whole world is melting and we are the first to see it. Wide awake on this lush winter day as the trees grow wet and dark and the earth warms and softens. We are the first, the first. We spring, spring, spring. Now that is a great poem. It's told from the perspective of this little insect that I never even heard of but have thousands and billions, millions and probably billions of in my yard. Who knows, but here's... Here's the bird's feet. Here's the melting trees and icicles and snow as the 
earth gets wet, I mean, wet because it's melting, it's not hard, solid, frozen. And here are those tiny little non-biting snow fleas called springtails. Here's the other bird. I didn't notice that. I bet, it, I bet these little springtails better hop because I bet you those birds would love to eat them. I'm going to read this poem again because poems often need to be read more than once because they distill so much into a short number, a small number of words. Plus, it's a good one. The whole world is melting. The whole world is melting. The snow is slumping and dripping and staining the bark black. Roots poke from puddles and the leaf litter where we live is squishy damp instead of frozen hard. And we have to move. We have to spring. A mob of us, a mass of us, a throng of us, launching ourselves to the top of the slippery snow, swarming its peaks and valleys. And what will we find? New moss, all ripe for slithering. New loam, new love. The whole world is melting and we are the first to see it. Wide awake on this lush winter day as the trees grow wet and dark and the earth warms and softens. We are the first, the first. We spring, spring, spring. A play on the word spring because spring means bounce, bounce, bounce. But it also means the season that comes after winter. Oh, that's a lovely poem. Well, oh, it took more than I thought. So let me sign off. I love you, sweetie pie. Have a great day. Bye-bye.